Hello, this is Pastor Wolverton, uh, once again from Lighthouse. And I just want to be an encouragement to you today, bringing you another parable about prayer. You know, sometimes when we don't get our prayers answered, um, we get frustrated and we quit praying sometimes. And sometimes we even lose faith in God and sometimes even uh, we quit serving God and different things like that. Uh, but we have to understand uh, that prayer uh, is not um, like having a genie in a magic lamp or something like that. Um, it's a whole different realm. God has our best interest at heart. And, you know, I, I think of that scripture in Isaiah where the Bible says, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. So we need to understand that God has a will and a purpose for our lives. And we need to trust God enough to believe that he has our best interest at heart. And, um, of course, we are studying parables. Today we're going to talk about the parable of the unjust judge and the widow. And I just love this parable. And of course, it's a, it's a parable that teaches a lot of, teaches us a lot of things about prayer. And of course, the number one thing is to pray, uh, without ceasing and, and to not quit and to not give up. And let's look at Luke chapter 18 and verse number one. And we'll look at this wonderful parable about prayer. The Bible says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Listen to this, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge him speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Hey, let me ask you this evening, have you quit praying about something because of discouragement, because of doubt, because sometimes you think, well, what good does it do uh, to pray anyways? No, that's the wrong kind of thinking. And, and that's why Jesus told this parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Let me give you some encouragement this evening to, to keep praying. Hey, don't give up. Why? Because simply put, there's too much at stake. Uh, we shouldn't give up. Uh, there's just too much at stake. How about uh, a situation, maybe you're praying for a loved one to get saved, and, and maybe you quit praying for him because you figure, well, uh, God's not going to do it. It's never happened. They've never gotten saved after all these years. Hey, listen, uh, there's too much at stake. Uh, heaven versus hell. Eternity is a very long time, so we must not give up. And and, you know, maybe praying for a prodigal, maybe praying for somebody that's away from God. Uh, man, don't give up. There's too much at stake. And, and you're praying for somebody that's going through an illness or going through a problem. and Or, or maybe your marriage. You've been praying for so long uh, for God to heal your marriage and it hasn't happened. And, and so you, you give up. You just quit praying to God. And, and let me encourage you again. Uh, keep praying to God. If there's anything this story shows us... It's never give up. Uh, keep praying. Why? Because the stakes are too high. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what was going on in this woman's life, um, what she was facing. Uh, but I dare say it was something very, very serious or she would not be trying to seek out justice uh, from this judge. Now, keep in mind, uh, this woman, she was a widow. She had nothing uh, no one else to turn to except this unjust judge. And again, I want to let you know that this unjust judge is not God. You know, obviously God is very just, uh, but God is trying to show us a contrast here that if this unjust judge will help this woman, uh, what do you think God will do for us? And, and so we need to pray. Why? Because the stakes are too high, uh, to quit. And here's another, 
thing that will happen if we quit praying. It says, he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray. And listen to this, and not to faint. Hey, to faint means to lose heart. It means to quit. And you know, uh, if we quit praying, if we don't pray, guess what's going to happen? We're going to lose heart and we're going to want to quit. But let me encourage you, uh, keep praying. Oh, there's so many things uh, that people pray for. I can think of my mother-in-law. She prayed for her mother to be saved for, I think, for 27 years. And she ended up getting saved. And, you know, George Mueller, uh, the great prayer warrior, he had two boyhood friends that he loved very much, was very close to, but they didn't want anything to do with the gospel. And listen to this for over 60 years, George Mueller. I mean, one of the greatest prayer warriors ever. Over 60 years, he prayed for these two friends. And guess what? Just shortly before George Mueller died, one of those friends got saved. And then shortly after George Mueller died, the other one got saved. They both got saved. And you know, uh, George Mueller, one thing he didn't do, uh, he didn't quit. Uh, now, um, we have in our story this judge. Uh, think about this. He did not fear God. He did not regard man. And you know, this judge... He moved from place to place to place. They didn't have a courthouse like we have nowadays. And bribes were very prevalent. You just didn't get a hearing in front of the judge just because it was your right to do that. You got a hearing in front of the judge because you paid off the workers. You paid off the servants of the court. Uh, and you paid off the judge. And, and so again, this woman, it was just a hopeless situation. But what did she do? She kept coming to the judge and she kept asking and she kept asking. Why? Because there was too much at stake. Let me encourage you with this also. Don't give up when circumstances seem to be against you. And I just touched on that. You know, sometimes it seems like uh, everything is stacked against us. And I've talked to a lot of people over the years and whether it's in the office or whether it's just in casual conversation and, and, and they feel like uh, for some reason, uh, the deck stacked against them. They figure the circumstances are too dim and too dreary. And why even, why even pray when the circumstances seem so bad against us? Um, but you know, frankly, that's when we do need to pray. And you know, that's another tool of the devil. He tries to get us to faint. He doesn't want us to pray. He wants us to quit praying. Why? Because when we pray, that means there's hope. So there's hope. So, don't let your dire circumstances keep you from praying. On the contrary, that should cause you to want to ask even more. And and that's the situation this widow was in. In verse number three, the Bible says, And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And you know, if you do a, a study on the words here, uh, she came to him. That's talking about over and over again. Just like ask, seek, and knock in Matthew chapter number 7. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Uh, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And uh, if you study those words, ask, seek, and knock, it has to do with doing it over and over and over again. It's not a one-time thing. And this lady, she came to this judge even when the circumstances uh, were stacked against her, even when she knew that she had no social standing, uh, she was a she was a widow. Uh, she was at the bottom of the food chain, so to speak. She had no husband to go to the court with her and and stand with her. The bottom line is this woman had no respect uh, from this judge at all. And and the Bible says this guy didn't respect anybody anyways, especially a widow. But what did she do? She came to him and she kept coming to him and she kept coming to him, uh, not in court, mind you, but in the marketplace. I mean, I can see him leaving the tent uh, in the evening. And there she was. When he came in in the morning, there she was again. When he went to lunch, there she was again. I mean, everywhere he went, he kept seeing her. And she kept asking him and asking him, why? Because she had no other choice. Uh, her circumstances uh, were great. And folks, let me encourage you. You may going through, be maybe going through a hard time. You may be going uh, through a battle. Uh, not, now is not the time uh, to give up praying. 
Now's the time to ask even more. Hey, even if your circumstances are dark and, and, and things don't look good, it seems like there's no hope. But we need to pray even more. And that's why we need to pray, just as a side note, our country right now. I don't know about you, but I just feel like, wow, our country is past the point of, of no return. So should we just give up and not pray for our president, not pray for the new administration? No, we need to pray even more for God to smite the hearts of our elected officials, for God to speak to, uh, to uh, our elected officials. And so let me encourage you, um, keep praying, keep praying, don't give up. You say, well, man, my circumstances are pretty bleak and things aren't changing. Why should I keep wasting my time uh, to pray? Well, here's the answer. Don't give up. Why? Because the answer might be just around the corner. You know, I don't know how many times in my life when all of a sudden God will just surprise you with something, you know, and, and man, those are the best surprises at all. When you're, when you're not even expecting it, that all of a sudden God, uh, just speaks to your heart and, uh, and just does something in your heart, or maybe it's a physical thing, maybe a monetary thing, whatever. And, and all of a sudden, boom, God's, God comes through. And, and this woman, I don't know how long she was after this judge, but, but the Bible says, that he would not, and, and Luke chapter number 18, verse number four, and he would not for a while. He wouldn't help her for a while. You know, sometimes God does that with us. You know, he makes us go through this, these time periods for a while when he doesn't seem to be speaking to us, when he doesn't seem to, to care. Uh, we think that, but we know that he does care. And the Bible says again here in verse four, and he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by, listen to this, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. So the judge kept refusing, but she kept coming. And that's what we need to do. We need to keep going before God. You know, that word troubles me. Uh, is interesting. She's wearying me. She's literally wearing me out. And you know, honestly, he wasn't trying to help that woman because of compassion. He wasn't trying to help that woman because of justice. Simply put, it was self-preservation. She was driving him insane. So what did she do? She kept coming to this judge and asking and asking. And little did she know the answer, the help was right around the corner. You know, I wonder how often we quit talking to God, we quit praying, we quit, quit asking, and the answer was right around the corner. And you know what? We don't know. Our, our timing is not God's timing. That's for sure. So what we need to do is we just need to keep trusting God and we just need to keep asking and asking. And you know, I can think of people that have prayed for, for people to be saved. And many times I've, I've gotten the good reports and I prayed for X amount of weeks or months or even years or even decades and people got saved. And so, you know, you just never know. I'm going to read you uh, an excerpt from, from uh, John Wesley's, um, diary. Maybe you've heard this illustration before, but it's amazing uh, to me how we keep being faithful. We keep praying. We keep trusting God. And all of a sudden, God will open up the windows of heaven. Listen to this uh, piece from uh, page from John Wesley's diary. It reads this, Sunday morning, May 5th, preached at St. Anne's, was asked not to come back anymore. Sunday p.m. May 5th, preached at St. John's, a deacon said, get out and stay out. <laughs> Sunday, May 12th, a.m. service. Preach at St. Jude's. Can't go back there anymore. Sunday, p.m., May 12th, preached at St. George's. Kicked out again. Sunday, a.m., May 19th, preached at uh, St. somebody else's. <laughs> and they called a special meeting and said I couldn't return. Why, why did they say that he couldn't return? Because they thought he was a heretic. Uh, that's why. Um, but anyways, May 19th, uh, he preached on the street and he was kicked off the street 
for his so-called heresy. Um, Sunday, May 26, he preached in a meadow and he was chased out of the meadow by somebody that on purpose let a bull out into the meadow while he was preaching. Listen to this. On Sunday, June 2nd, he preached uh, at the edge of town and he was kicked off the highway. And that evening, he preached in a pasture and 10,000 people showed up. Wow, think about everything that that John Wesley went through and some of these early uh, church um, forefathers, uh, what they went through. And uh, But they just kept preaching. They just kept praying. They they realized, hey, I'm doing what God wants me to do. And the, and the results were not good. But guess what? All of a sudden, God opened up the windows of heaven and poured them out a blessing. So don't give up, folks. The answer might just be around the corner. Here's another thought. Don't give up because God is working. You know, realize this. Just because you're not seeing results does not mean that God is not working. I think about the Apostle Paul. You know, he got saved, but but before he got saved, God was working in his heart and in his life. And Jesus even said to him on that road to Damascus, he said, hey, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks, isn't it? Uh, Saul of Tarsus, and it was because God had been moving in his life. I, my own testimony, my father, um, he got saved through a series of events. Um, but guess what happened? Uh, God, for a long time, was working in his heart and in his life, and in the end, he ended up getting saved. So don't give up, folks. Realize this, God is working. And again, God's timing is not our timing. And his will is not always our will. Let's look at it in Luke chapter number 18, verse 7. The Bible says this, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Jesus is saying, hey, we have this unjust judge who helps this person, and he's an unjust judge. Hey, how much more will your heavenly father avenge his own children? You know, I think about that verse in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give good things to them that ask him? Hey, folks, rest assured when we take things before God, God is working out the answer. And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. And we know sometimes the answer is is maybe later. And so in any of those scenarios, we just need to trust God that he knows best. But realize this, God is always uh, working. If a widow can get an unjust judge to answer her and help her, hey, how much more so your heavenly father uh, help us. And look what Jesus said here in verse number eight. He says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Not like this unjust judge, but God says, I'll avenge them speedily. And you know, that simply means that God is working on it. And you know what? We have to trust that God is doing that. You know that the answer will come. It may not be today, but we just need to put it in God's hands. I've told people that so often, uh, especially recently in this climate in which we live. Hey, just put it in the hands of God. Just trust God. That doesn't mean we shouldn't labor. We shouldn't work. We shouldn't do all we can do. But the bottom line is when we do, when we've done all we can do, what do we do? We just turn it over to God and give it to God. And here's a final thought for us this evening. Don't give up. Why? Because God always keeps his promises. Realize that. Oh, there's so many verses that we could look at tonight about the promises of God. I think about Hebrews 13, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I can think Jesus said something similar right before he went to heaven. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And then that verse I just mentioned, Matthew seven eleven. if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give good things than ask, that ask him? I think about 
Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that doesn't even include the promises of heaven and the promises of, of his love, that he loves us all the time. And it, I could go on and on about it. But you know what? Jesus wants us to be persistent in prayer. Why? Because God always keeps his promises. And here's another thing. When we pray, it's showing our faith. And you know, God wants us to trust him, to believe him. We know in Hebrews 11, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we need to come to God in faith. He really likes that. I put something on Facebook earlier from this lesson. I really love it. It says, without faith, prayer becomes little more than a ritual. Think about that for a minute. Without faith, prayer becomes little more than a ritual that we perform. And then we wonder, does it really work? Am I wasting my time? But you know what? Prayer does work. But human nature, sometimes we lack the belief, we lack the faith. I can think of Peter in the book of Acts. He's in prison, if you remember the story. The whole church met, and they, they were praying for God to deliver Peter. Oh, God, please deliver Peter. And, you know, it's kind of humorous, but it's kind of sad because God did just, in fact, that. A miracle happened. I mean, God shook that place, let Peter out. Peter went to the house where they were praying, and they didn't even believe that Peter was there. Hey, they were praying for God to deliver Peter. God did deliver Peter. And then guess what? They didn't even really believe it was him. And that's human nature, not to slam those people. We we do pretty much the same thing. But you know what? Don't give up because God answers prayer. We might not always like the answer, but I promise you, God always answers prayer. And God always keeps his promises and that's what we need to do. Keep coming to God. And listen, it doesn't say if the Son of Man comes. It says when the Son of Man comes. Guess what? He's going to come. And guess what? Hey, what, what God, let's not concern ourselves with the Lord's faithfulness. Let's concern ourselves with our faithfulness. You know, he is faithful, by the way. But let's not get so wrapped up in God's faithfulness to, faithfulness to us. We forget that we have a responsibility of being faithful to God. I want to read verse number eight one last time. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Listen to this. Nevertheless, when, not if, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith? Hey, let me ask you. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find faith in you? You know, Jesus told the disciples that night, he said, watch and pray. He knew what was coming. He knew a very hard time was coming in their lives that he, he was going to get arrested and different things. And he kept telling them, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Watch and pray. He said this, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And folks, our flesh is weak. Jesus knew it. That's why he said in verse number one, that men ought always to pray and what faint not. Because if we fail to pray, we're going to faint. Hey, let me encourage you. Don't fail to pray. I don't know what it is that you've been praying for. I don't know what it is that you've ceased, uh, those things that you may have ceased praying for. But let me encourage you to dust off those prayers, so to speak, so to speak, and start praying again for that loved one. Start praying again for 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 um, that relationship, whether it's a marriage or or whether it's a a, a father son or, or a parent a, a child whatever, and maybe maybe even in church, um, this relationships or whatever. There's so many things in life that we think are beyond repair, but you know what? What's the Bible say? With men things are impossible, but with God, all things shall be possible. So let's. Be like that widow woman. Jesus is trying to uh, help us. Uh, be persistent. Uh, just keep going to God over and over again. And guess what? God will hear us. And God will answer according to his time. But let's, let's keep praying. Hey, in this day and age, let's keep praying for our country. Doesn't seem like much good is happening. But as Christians, what's, what hope does America have if Christians quit praying? 
what hope do our political parties have if Christians just write them off and quit praying for them? Hey, listen, let's keep praying. Uh, I hope this lesson was an encouragement to you, this parable. Uh, next week, we're going to look at uh, a combination of a group of parables about what what is the kingdom of heaven likened to. And I'm looking forward to that uh, already. Now, I hope you have a good close to the week. Uh, tomorrow, God willing, we'll be at Zoom on Zoom uh, at 7 o'clock to pray one for another. And I hope to see you there. God bless you.